wilds. Tell me why the sky's blue. Tell me why this money is green. Now, Lord, please tell me why I do these things to make tea. Now, yeah, let me. They kick me out of church because I just don't listen. Always fall asleep when the preacher is preaching. This episode is uh, sponsored by nobody. So the only way we get we keep the lights running, you know, we got merch. As you can see, the hat I got on, the t-shirts. You can find it at our website, Yus, which is w h y u c e dot com. Just get the merch. Yeah, just get the merch, man. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode. Your number one podcast that helps you pass time. And how do I do that? <laughs> I do that by being. Usos like Tashi Wilson here on the platform, you know, bring entrepreneurs, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, entrepreneurs, small business owners, content creators, just everybody out there who's made an impact in their general life and their community and stuff. But just bring them on the platform to just, you know, spread the love, man. Tashi Uso, man, thank you Come for on. coming on the platform, brother. Man, uh, honor is mine, man. The pleasure is mine. I appreciate you, man. Uh, what you're doing with your platform and just displaying our people and what they got going on, man. So uh, it's just another platform for our people to, you know, just project their voices. And, you know, it's, it's really great. What you doing, Os? I appreciate yeah. you. Hey, appreciate you, man. Appreciate you for coming on, brother. Why don't you go ahead and just let our listener know a little bit about, uh, you know, biography of yourself, brother? Well, my name is Tasi Wilson. Uh, we come from... Uh, my two grandpas, my first, my grandpa, on my mom's side, along with uh, Tasi Cialoi, and then uh, Wilson from my grandpa, uh, Chester Wilson, uh, who married my grandma C. Popo on my father's side. So, uh, and then, uh, yeah, I I was born in Carson, California, and uh, at the age of three, moved up to Sac Town, and uh, been living in the Sac ever since, um, and out here in Sacramento, me and both me and my wife, we have a uh, the logo foundation and logo LLC logo stands, uh, you know, what we made it stand for was uh, leading out generations oppressed. And, uh, we do a lot of work with the youth out here in Sac town. Um, we, uh, she, she works with pregnant women doing doula, uh, offers doula services to women in the community and also works with teenage girls with Queens of purpose. Uh, it's like a sisterhood uh, program teaching, young youth, uh, young teenage girls about, you know, self-worth and just, uh, you know, empowering, you know, young teenage girls. And then I have Big Oos Mentoring Program, Bump, which, uh, you know, we, I just started uh, this this year, actually. And uh, but I've been working with you for years, uh, you know, working in the social work. Obviously, you know, you know what it is with the polys. A lot of polys work in the group homes, you know. So that's definitely one of my stereotypes checked off right there. Worked in the group homes before, and uh, <laughs> but a uh, plethora, plethora experience working in the school districts as well. And uh, pretty much, I teach character. You know, I'm also a, a, a player development coach at Cordova High School, and uh, with the Junior Lancers out in, uh, in in the East Side community in which I grew up, teaching kids about you know self self discipline, you know respect. Uh, you know, a whole bunch of character traits that we want our youth to, uh, you know, be instilled with. And uh, and also I'm an MC, man. I make music as well. Um, Spotify, iTunes, all of that. Tasi Wilson, you know, I promise you won't be disappointed. I speak life rather than death, you know, with the power of my tongue. And uh, I'm uh, probably the best Samoan MC or Polynesian MC uh, in the history to ever touch a microphone. And I say that confidently, not arrogantly, you know what I mean? Just give me a listen. I'm sure that you'll agree, but yeah. <laughs> hey, Oos, man, for real though, but everything, man, we're going to leave everything about my Oos on the link. We'll put it on below the link and stuff. So check them out to uh, check out my Oos, uh, Tassie Wilson. But before all that, man, cause you, you pretty much body a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, before we carry on to yours, man, you said wifey does the, is it Angula? How you pronounce that? Oh, doula. Doula, uh, uh, you know, they they pretty much work with pregnant women. Um, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so doula. Man, why don't you educate our listeners? Because you got to remember, you know what I'm saying, a whole bunch of people. <laughs> don't even know. I personally kind of have a little bit of idea, you know what I'm saying, for the breakfast club talking about you know but it's it seems like a whole bunch of uh african-american that's like more of that kind right like a traditional thing that uh, they, they teach and stuff from like pregnancies and getting them ready 
You know, so the history, right, uh, in this country, at least, uh, for this country, for America, um, a lot of, right, uh, if you do the history of African Americans, mm -hmm. uh, they they the African women African American women who were slaves, they took care of uh, you know the Palangi women and children, yes. right? And so um, a lot of their history is in birth work and stuff like that. But it's not just in America. There's been doulas been going on since Bible times. You mm -hmm. know, uh, yeah, uh, Moses, right? Moses, mm -hmm. right? Was was uh, found in the river, and uh, you know they helped um, they helped take care. Of Moses, right? Uh, the birth workers, and so uh, doula is one of the birth work is one of the uh, titles of you know different um, birth workers, and uh, there's also Polynesian. Uh, there's also Samoan uh, doulas out in the Bay Area as well. Um, my wife, I know she's looking to connect with them, but yeah, um, there's a just a uh, if you look at the data, you know, just fast forward to 2024 outside of the biblical ties, but uh, mm -hmm. fast forward to mm -hmm. 2024 and um, the African-American women's uh, rate of deaths during pregnancy, the mortality rate is, is very, is, is just like, if you take a look at the data and the numbers, um, it's, it's unbelievable. Like if you really look at it, it's like almost like, wow, compared to other races, like then, you know, other races, then you, you see African-Americans mortality you know women's mortality rate is uh it's not even close you know it's, it's it's really sad and so my wife pretty much you know took it upon herself to step up and and say you know i want to do something about this and she went in 2020 uh I, th I think it was either 20 or 19 but she she stepped up and she went got the schooling got the education for it and fast forward, uh, you know, 2021 uh, or 2022, she became certified and she's been working with clients ever since and just trying to just attack that mortality rate, you know what I'm saying, and, and bring it down. And when she was going through her training, just to hear, you know, I'm learning as she, you know what I'm saying, as she yeah, going through training, yeah. she teach, she teaching me and I'm like, wow. It was actually a, a group of doulas and they I, they was like the Avengers, you know what I mean? Like just hearing about, you know, these different women from the South to the East Coast. Uh, she's one of few that's from the West Coast. And uh, just hearing about these different women who really want to attack that mortality rate. Mm -hmm. I was like, y'all like the Avengers, man. Y'all really out here trying to, you know, some real, some real, you know, heroes, you know what I'm saying? Just, and she took it upon herself, you know, to do that. And uh, man, and also, Man, I'm so like it. I, it caught me super late. I, and my 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 grandma Fu Falau, she was a birth worker in the islands, right? And that's all she said growing up. She was like, you know, I'm a nurse. I'm a nurse. And like, I it just hit me this year. And I was like looking at my wife. I was like, hey, my grandma Fu, my grandma Fu was 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 a a birth worker too. And she was like, "You're heckin' late, man." I named we named our for our daughter after my grandma Fula, right? We have a, mm -hmm. my daughter. Her name's Fula too. And it just hit me like, "Wow, I'm married." Like my grandma, I'm a grandma boy, but I'm married like almost like you know what I'm saying. Like very similar. My wife is very similar. Has a lot of similarities to my grandma. But she, my grandma was a birth worker in the islands and and gave birth to babies in Papua New Guinea to you know Fiji. Uh, you know, like she literally that was, she was like the expert in the islands for working with, uh, you know, with, with, with pregnant women in the islands. And, and here I go, you know, I marry a woman, a woman who, you know, what I'm saying is a birth worker too now. You know what I mean? So like, uh, but, but yeah, it's, it's amazing, man, uh, with, with what they do and what doulas do is, you know, they offer support. Like last night, my wife was. Uh, doing overnight. She does overnight with one of her clients and, uh, you know, pretty much uh, if the ba baby wakes up, it's just one of the, uh, you know, postpartum services she offers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so yeah, that's, that's one of the things that she, she does. Uh, so it's, it's a lot of things that doulas do. They, they're there to help support the pregnant women, um, you know, before birth and also during birth and then also after birth. It was a lot to, uh, to learn about too, man, with the, just the business behind birth with the hospitals and the insurance companies and mm -hmm. how much money, how much more money they make when you get a C-section and how the hospitals, uh, you know, try to push C-sections on, you know, 
on on women and and it's a whole bunch of things you know how that saying goes you know better you do better it's 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 a uh, man when you find out the type of you know the, the business behind birth is it's really it's unsettling those uh, you know for lack of you know better words and just you know it, it's it's when you do the when you do research and look into the business behind birth it's crazy man and and uh but yeah that's that's pretty much you know I, I, I could, you know, I can go a little longer on, on that, but I, I'm going to leave that there, you know what I'm saying, you know, but yeah. But I just wanted right. to just shed the light because I know as a coconut, I didn't hear about that until I heard my other, like, you know, like, I, I think it's called The Breakfast Club, uh, Charlamagne the God and DJ Envy and all of them like that from New York. Yeah. So when they kept talking about that, I'm like, Dula, you know, I get my education off of that from the streets, you know, so. Right. I figure that's something that's uncommon to the side more. Well, I could be wrong, but in the Bay Area, y'all been around a whole bunch of diversity, so it's 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 like normal. But for me yeah. in, in Kentucky, I wouldn't want to say people are naive. It's just the fact that if you don't know, you just don't know. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Educating on no, no, facts. Just everybody, man. Interesting. Well, uh, before we carry on, bro. So, did you ever experience any of that? You know, a do love. Uh, while your wife was performing, is that something just her, or is that also you as a man? You know, being the wife, being that it's your wife to support her. Have you ever witnessed, or you know, any? Because I know it's somewhat it's like a spiritual thing too. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a it's an emotional yeah. but a joyful thing too. Experience. No, wise. that's that's one hundred percent pure facts. Is birth is spiritual. Yeah. My wife, we uh we believe in uh Jesus. You know Jesus Christ, and uh mm -hmm. we're you know we're Christian and uh. We believe in the, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit. So now in this field, in the birth worker field, man, it's a lot of witchcraft that goes on in the birth working field. A lot of, you know, doulas who, uh, you know, they're into that type of stuff. But my wife, she makes it be known, you know, who we serve and what kingdom we work for. Mm -hmm. And right off the bat, because, you know, when you're giving birth to a, you know, it's very spiritual giving birth. And so my wife you know, she prays for her clients. It's a lot of spiritual responsibility yeah. that comes with being a doula. And it's not easy. Um, you know, my wife, man, it's, man, I, uh, she, she had took a loss, uh, with one of her clients and, uh, first ever, you know, she's, she's had many clients, but it was not easy, man. It took a toll on, on both of us spiritually, you know what I mean? Cause that doesn't happen, you know, it's never happened before. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's a lot, but you know, going back to that field in particular, just a lot of that witchcraft. People, you know, a lot of witches who are uh, in in that field. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I'm not ashamed to dive deep into the spiritual <laughs> either. Yeah. But that that it's 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 black and white. There's no gray area with us. You know what I mean? Like either, you know what I'm saying, but. She makes it be known to her clients that she's a believer in Jesus Christ and, mm -hmm. you know, and lets them know, like, hey, you know, because there is a lot of believers and that are pregnant women. Right. And they look at people and who are doulas and they're like, man, I, I'm not into all this new age stuff. I'm not into that, you know, the stuff that they're into. And then, boom, they find my wife and like, oh, perfect. Like, there's not too many of, you know, believers who are birth workers as far as the yeah. doula goes yeah exactly and so then boom you know she's able to connect it's right she can't be giving birth to a woman who's into that stuff either though you know what i mean like mm -hmm. if, if they're into new age and some stuff that's just it just doesn't align like i can't you know it's just it's territories in the in the spiritual realm you know what i mean gotcha, and it's gotcha. just yeah yeah so yeah it uh but yeah, it's very spiritual. And like I said, it go back, it goes back to even, you know, Moses times, you know what I'm saying, with the uh with the birth workers and stuff like that. The natural birth and stuff like that, yeah. That so, that uh that word's gonna come to me in a minute. Uh that word, that uh, that position that uh man, they work with pregnant women, they help deliver them. The pedi I don't know uh, why pediatric? Pediatric or something? Not like you're that? not pediatric, but it's close. They um uh, one of them's coconut. I know y'all know what probably Dr. Yeah, the, the that doctors is it's a it's a doctor and then it's a um a nurse like that in between, the one that helps deliver the the, the baby. Yeah. The pregnant yeah. woman. And least. and yeah, and you have to go to, you know, years in school for that to become that. Um man, I don't know why it's escaping me. It'll pop up though. What's the name of the title for 
the one that helps a doctor deliver a baby, not the pediatric, but not even a nurse. What is the other names? Sometimes I just got to ask Siri. Labor? No. Nope. Nah, it's not labor. It's all right, man. When we find it, I'm sure the audience will help. <laughs> As a, you know, by the way, disclaimer, we do not uh, claim that we're experts. You know what I'm saying? Everything that we're talking about is oh, I feel like opening, I feel like, I you feel like opening, uh, opening the door is like, hey, man, what's that thing called? <laughs> I feel like doing that real quick because it's, it's really hey, messing with me. Hey, go ahead. Go ahead. Let her know because I can always fast so, forward the picture. Was that know. handmade or yeah. something? Oh, something. handmade. And I didn't have. Hey, what's that thing called? That uh, that position that's called your. It's not doulas, but they're. What's it called? They work with pregnant women. They help deliver them. Midwife. Oh, midwife. Midwife. Yeah. That's what it is. So yeah. Midwife. Thank you. Thank you. Midwife. So okay. midwives. So the midwives say Moses in the Bible. They they talk about midwives that's all the way in, all the way back in Exodus, right? So yeah, so midwifery, right? Midwifery. That's what my grandma was. You know, what I'm saying she was a nurse out there, and then she she was in she was a midwife. So yeah. Boom. Damn. Hey. Shout out to the midwives, man. Hey. I'm gonna hey. go drop on a five one for the midwives, baby. <laughs> Hey, they saw man. Let's move on. Let's, uh, you know, saying it just caught my attention when you said Dulo. Is that right, Dula? Yeah, Dula. Yeah, Dula, Dula. There you go, Cardinals. Yep. Y'all just been educated. Yeah, no more, more, man. We just learned something new. So and that, listen, you know, man, so we're gonna go ahead and drop that on the link too. You know what I'm saying? We gotta hook up wifey too, man. For those out there in the Bay Area, now is that that's just the Bay Area, or is that? Nationwide, you know, because you do like so like what we're doing, you know what I'm saying? Like over o over the internet or just in person? Uh so like her personally, um she yeah, she uh she has um what they call like uh sessions like um basically like little conferences or, or uh over Zoom and stuff like that. But yeah. personally she when she does personal work one on one, it's out here in Sacramento. There you go, folks. We'll drop it all on the link, man. Your inspiration can make an impact in our community and everyone out there. You're a content creator, small business owner, entrepreneur, or even in a career to contact us. We would love to have you on our platform. You have a why and you. Now let's get back to it. Anyways, Oos, let's get let's fast forward to you now. So you said yes, you're MC, man. Let's talk about your MC, man. How long you been doing that for, man? And who uh, uh you know what kind of rapper do you from you know compare like you we were listening to who do you compare yourself to, man? I'm gonna have to check your stuff out too, because all I seen on IG was just uh the foundation community man. work and stuff. Yeah, yeah. The community work, brother. You don't really advertise your uh, MC, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, I, I, I uh, so uh, recently I've been just focusing on a lot of community work and stuff, mm -hmm. but I have been I have been working on the low. You know, I'm saying on the music. I just wanted to make sure uh, when I do come put music out again, it's a little bit of poopy behind my music and it's a plan and I have people in place and making sure I'm not wasting my bars and wasting, you know, energy trying to put it out there. Cause before I was very consistent with just dropping music, dropping music. Mm -hmm. Then I, I just like, you know what, let me make sure when I present a project to the people is it's got some type of funding behind it and stuff like that. But yeah, recently been focusing on the community and stuff, but Going back to the music tip, though, uh, man, I started uh, and man, I've been rapping since forever. You know, my uncle, my uncle Ron, shout out to uh, to Lil Reed. He 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 was a rap, you know, rapping bit in our in our bloodline for a minute. And then also my babysitters when we stayed when we were living in Carson, man, was a Booyah tribe, man. So okay. you know they. Yeah, so my mom, you know, she would tell us like, yeah, the, the music y'all babysitters. Uh, I think it was uh, I think she said Ted, who was Gays the Red. I think uh, used to live in our garage, and you know, so yeah, so so boom, like there's that connection with the you know with the music, and then uh, out here in Sac though, man, we started uh, me, my brother Seek, and then uh, my 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 cousin Jacob Fatu and and Kesey Fatu. We started the East Union and then also Sephify too. Uh, you know, we started a, our, our group called East Union and back in uh, 2017, 
where we started really uh, went to the studio, started, you know, recording. We was uh, recording with who was known by, they, back then they were by D&D, but they're known as Black Tuxedo right now. And they 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 work with uh with Chris Brown and Tank and Genuine and all them back, that mm. TGT album, whatever. They won a Grammy on that album. But like they were the ones who uh studio, we're you know, childhood friends growing up going going to their studio in 17 when we first started making music. And uh but yeah, they they had uh pretty much the executive produced our uh first mixtape, you know, our, our first one ever. And that was 2017. Uh, I mean, 2007. My apologies, uh, 07. And uh, you know, pretty much from there, you know, it was just out here, you know, slanging mixtapes, yeah. you know, out the trunk with it, you know. And uh, we had our whole hood, you know, uh, feeling our music and stuff, you know. Drop. It felt good, you know, as a high schooler hearing cars dropping by, slapping, you know, slapping our music and stuff. So we were like little hood stars, you know, said <laughs> back, back, you know, in high school and stuff. And then, uh, but yeah, fast forward, you know, I just stayed consist- consistently working. In uh, 2014, I opened up for Nipsey Hussle, you know, with the Crenshaw tour mm-hmm. and uh, got the chance. Yeah, rest in peace, man. I got a chance to meet him, meet Jay Stone and uh, backstage, got the freestyle with uh, with some of the All Money In crew, you know what I'm saying, and, and really break bread with them you know what i'm saying and uh got to really like and and uh at the time it felt so surreal because i was a real nip fan you know before i met him so it, it just felt like oh man like it's this is about to go down because all the work i was putting in i started to see you know god bless me with you know like hey you're working hard at this craft yeah. if you keep working hard you know and so i started to see the uh you know reaping the, the you know the, the hard i started to see the fruits from my labor with the music side and then uh but yeah uh you know opened up 20 was it 2016 opened up for Tanel out there in long beach and stuff and uh you, you know so I, it, it was just consistent work but i also got married that year and so uh you know got married had some babies continued to work a little bit when i could you know mm-hmm. and uh you know, here we are, you know, uh, 24, you know, still still uh, making some music, you know, and uh, just just had a um, just performed that. Uh, shout out to Chef T and uh, my sis, Cynthia, man, they they uh, have this only Samoan owned restaurant in Sacktown, uh, fresh off the boat, just performed there uh, on Saturday, you know, just trying nice. to get, get my performance performance legs back under me, you know, as a you know, we hit this summer looking to. Um, do, do some shows and, and release release a lot of music this summer. That's that's what's uh, what we got planned, you know, this summer. Like my kids actually, they the ones who was asking me like, cause it was like, Daddy, when are you gonna go to the studio? When are you gonna you know go to the studio again? And when are you gonna start making more music again? So that's why they've they've been the one pushing me to you know uh, you know to get back on my music grind because they've been asking me like, cause they they like they like the music, you know what I mean? They're like, like the music, man, your number one, yeah. Uh, band. Yeah, for real. So, so they've been pushing me to get back in the studio and stuff, and and really push out. You know, I'm like, okay, because well, I got a whole album ready. I've been working on an album for the past like four years, three to three to four years. It's like you know, been in the slow cooker. You know what I mean? And so it's 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 gonna be a classic. But uh, yeah, they've been they've been that bugging me. So I'm like, you know what? I think it's time. I think it's time, y'all. Y'all, y'all, y'all right. Y'all right. Let me let me go ahead. Let, let, they, they they came with me all Saturday to the performance and stuff. And so they were they were kind of juiced and stuff. And then my my daughters, they also do music. My daughter Fool, she sings. My 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 daughter Johnny, she uh she not only sings as well, but she she produces. And her beats, man, I she she impresses me, man. I, she impressed me. I I came home. She's like, Dad, check out my beat. And I was like, she ain't make that. <laughs> it was like yeah i was like i ain't gonna lie i, I couldn't tell her that it was it was nice because if i tell her it was it was raw she you know get a big head so i was like man that's pretty good i just gave her the that's pretty good no nah, it was tight <laughs> <laughs> it was it was it was fire i ain't gonna lie but i hey. you know we got to keep them humble you know hey so that's a true MC, man. They ain't never gonna give the kids their 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 their. their you know what I'm saying? Their, <laughs> hey, you know, cause she, yeah, cause she's so young. She only 13 years old. I was really impressed. 
But I was, you know, keep her, keep her working and getting better and better, you know. But yeah, man, that's impressive, man. I can't wait to hear the song, uh, your album when it drops, brother. You know what I'm saying? It's a good thing we're linked up. But you know, we're gonna move on to the uh, the foundation. Who's what? What inspired you to start all that? And I, that's what I know you of. I'm very surprised that you're an MC, and you know, you and your wife, especially with her with the doula, uh, doing the doula thing, and then. You just got a lot of things going on with you, brother. I mean, I, I thought that this was your main uh, uh, source was the foundation, right? To help you not the you. Yeah. Know? Can you educate our coconuts, you know what I'm saying, what the foundation's all about, bro? Yeah, so um, we, we uh, started our nonprofit, um, Lo, uh, Lo, the Longo Foundation, mm -hmm. and that's leading out generations oppressed. And, you know, it pretty much started with us getting married, you know. Um, you know, when we got married, our story, you know, um, was very spiritual, how we met, you know, I was coming off of a, a lot of stuff in my life and her too. And, uh, when we first met, you know, I, I wasn't looking at her like somebody that I was trying to, um, you know, pursue as far as like a, you know, intimate relationship or anything like that. It started off with her, you know, posting uh, devotionals on Facebook and I was like, mm. Hey, you know, I hit her up. You know, it was like, hey, you know, I, I like what, you know, you, you post and stuff, so you know, and uh, we ended up, you know, talking and she, we ended up praying with each other over the phone mm. and um, fast forward to the first time we ever met, um, we were at uh, a park in my hood. I'm from, she's from East Oakland too, by the way. She's from the, mm. she's from the uh, Bay Area. I'm from SAC, or originally from LA, but SAC, but she, uh, she's from the, she's from East Oakland. Uh, shout out to Brookfield, but um, we went to a park, White Rock Park, and uh, we we stayed up to like three o'clock in the morning talking and stuff. And she had told me, you know, can I say tell you something? You, you know, uh, it might scare you, but and I was like, you know, I'm like, hey, what, what's up? And she was like, well, I had a, you know, a dream that I was at this, you know, wedding and I was walking down the aisle and. Uh, you know, when I got up to the altar, and I've never even seen you, you know, I've met you before, but when I looked at the groom, it was you. And she was like, basically saying like, you know, I think you're my husband. Man. And I, yeah, and I told her, cause just, you know, at that saying, man, when you know you found the one, you found the one. Mm -hmm. This is our first time ever meeting. And I looked at her and I was like, man, I think, I think you're right. <laughs> we love that first sight. Yeah, we love that first and, sight. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just like I felt like it just I never felt that, you know, uh, spirit from another, you know, from another female that, you know, and I had um, three marriage, man. I had a lot of ladies, man. You know, I was, yeah. <laughs> hey, man, you know, pop my collar on that one. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's, it's nah, a part but, of the profile. Who's your MC? Yeah. You know, <laughs> lady comes with it. Hey, it comes with the territory. <laughs> True. So like, uh. You know, our marriage from the beginning, it was always spiritual, you know what I mean? And uh, when we got married and um, going through, we had fasted for the first time together in 2020. And we started to look at our family trees and look at the generations and the genera you know, where things started to go wrong in our family tree with generational curses. And um, we, we started to break those chains, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and so... It, with our marriage, it started with our marriage, you know, and so we started the Lomo Foundation, leading out generations of press, and both both of us started where you know work doing community work, you know, she, yeah. that's where we met too. Also, is she was also working with youth, um, in the, in the in the after school program and stuff like that, and I also was working after school programming, and uh, so you know, both working with with youth us figuring out things in both of our family trees and um, breaking generational curses. And so uh, just pretty much what God's use, you know, using our marriage for is to do that is leading out generations oppressed, you know what I mean? And it, when we say oppressed, it's just, it's, it's spiritual, you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's not with what people, you know, looking outside from the optics, you may think, Oh, you know, they're activists and so this, that, and that. No, it's just good one hundred percent, you know, kingdom driven. And uh, you know, when we're out there putting in the work, 
it feels surreal sometimes. And it's an honor to do this work. You know, it really is. Uh, but when we're out there, we see the families we're affecting. We're seeing, um, you know, people getting blessed and, um, you know, the overflow into our families, you know what I mean? And it really is a blessing to, and it's an honor to do this work. Like, uh, I go back to Martin Luther King's last speech over the mountaintop speech. And when he was saying like, you know, uh, well, it doesn't really, what happens, it doesn't matter what happens to me now. I just want to do the Lord's will, you know, knowing that he was going to die. Cause he knew it. Like the, when you watch that speech, you, you knew he was going to die, but he said, like, it doesn't really matter what happens with me now. I just want to do the Lord's will. And that's the realest thing that you could do as a human being when you understand your purpose and understand what you were put on this earth to do. It, like money, there's not amount of money that could, could like replace that. You know what I mean? It's just a, a feeling from within that's just so enriching and it's uh, rewarding when you see other families getting you know blessed it's an honor to do the lord's will man for real and uh that's how Long longo foundation was started and how we're how we're working right now in our community out here in Sacktown. and uh you know we're, we're we're pulling out treasures out of the darkness you know what i mean and um you know that's pretty much what it is and it's it's always i always tell people it's an honor to do this you know and glory to god because people try to you know say oh man this that like, nah, don't put me on no pedestal, man. I don't, I don't believe in that. You know, glory to God, you know, you know, that's what it is. And I always tell them, man, it's an honor to do this work. It's an honor to do kingdom work, you know, period. Yeah. And where did the name Longo come from for the name for Oh, that's my, that, that's our last name. So my, my last name is uh, Moe Longo. And then my grandpa, Isa, he shortened the uh, last name for the Palangi people in America. Uh, he shortened, you know, took off the Amoy part and just put Longo. So the full name's Amoy Longo, and he just he just took the last four letters of more uh, Amoy Longo and just L O G O, yeah. and so that's our last that's our last name is Longo. Okay. Which which yeah. Longo in Samoan means bell, yeah. right? Bell. And so if you think about a bell. Bell is to alert people, alert the people that you know. Even in the islands, the bell goes off and then it's prayer time. So. You know, that's what my mama said. <laughs> that's what my mama that's said. Good that now, <laughs> that's good because that still goes on till now, you know, in the villages. When mm -hmm. that bell goes off in the afternoon, man, everybody just stops the labor. They go in, they do family prayer, man. I think that's what that's what separates our culture from a lot of cultures. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So and that is God first. God first. God first. And that is what's needed. And, and not just our island, that's what's needed in the world. You know what I mean? And that's what we're doing in our community when we're in our community and working like that's that's what it is, man. You know, God first. And and uh, if we could just be an example for people to, you know, that's why we're so upfront with who we serve. And because when they start to see, you know, judging the, the word says judging by the fruit, you know, so. That's why I say it's also an honor. But then when people see like our people and, and you know, our people have a lot of favor amongst other races, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And but the main thing, too, is like, hey, God first, you know, and mm -hmm. this is the, the God that we're serving. Any fruit that you see in our life is because it's the true and living God who we who we put first. There you go, coconuts, because a lot of time I get this, <laughs> I get this from my experience, you know, traveling the world is like. I know that Samoans are people and all Polynesians, you know what I'm saying? We have this magnitude where folks like to just hang out with us. They're like, man, you guys are mm -hmm. always on a positive vibe. You know, it's whatever, man. But the truth is, man, the secret is, man, we put, we have a God that we serve and that's really what it is, man. Once you have that aligned, Amen. everything else trickles down, you know, your your wife and your kids, everything else comes, comes like fluid. You know, it works. Amen. Yeah, man. But so uh, within the foundation, brother, um, what are some of the activities that you guys implemented? You know what I'm saying? That you guys started that now it's like a like an oil rig. It's just it keeps. Yeah. Because I'm sorry you guys have a system or something in place. Yeah. Yeah. So um, one of the things that I, I do and as part of the Longo Foundation and part of Logo, Longo LLC as well um is uh, I started a, a flag, well, not just a flag football league. I started a sports league 
um, called Mays Freeman Youth Sports League, named after my two childhood friends, uh, Marcus Mays and then Mark Freeman. Uh, Marcus Mays, he growing up, uh, he was an all-star athlete. Um, by the time we hit the teens, you know, teen years, uh, you know, started the game, started to bang uh, for the turf and stuff like that. Um, you know, due to lack of a lot of resources that, you know, through the years working with youth, I realized what we were lacking and the disparities in our community that we was lacking. And so that that became the mission. And then, you know, rest in peace, the Swift, a.k.a. Uh, Mark Freeman. He uh, he's a friend who also, also was athletic and he just uh, he he, had, he was born with a birth with a, a defect when he was born. Um, he was a twin. And so uh, one of his. Uh, one of he, he basically had um, in the, uh, uh, was born with a defect where if you didn't take medication and wasn't getting treated right, it led to mental health issues, mm -hmm. but he, he passed away from that natu natural causes of just basically just, he, he didn't, he didn't uh, get the proper treatment that, um, you know, consistently. And, but, uh, but yeah, he passed away due to that, but he, he was a childhood friend of mine who I wanted to name the sports league after. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much to serve the community, which I grew up in, which is the East out here in SAC. And, um, we had a lack of sports and we had a lack of mentorship. And um, so I, you know, that's one of the things we do is uh, offer that for the community in which I grew up in. And I wanted to offer that for the, for the youth right now, for the kids growing up in the East and uh, provide that for them because that's something that we lack. Um, and so that's one, one of them is a uh, mainstream and youth sports league. And then, uh, also, uh, the mentorship program, Big Oost Mentoring Program, uh, teaching the kids uh, character. Um, I also do uh, staff development with uh, the education system because uh, the numbers, going, again, going back to the numbers, the suspension rates and who they suspend is, you know, uh, it's no secret when you look at the numbers. I'm not sure how it's in other states, but it could be nationwide. But uh, just offering a solution to help teachers connect with their students who, you know, they might not be able to, you know, speak the same language or, uh, you know, from my understanding and from my experience, what I see is, is a disconnect because one culture and one, they don't speak the same language. And so it's easy to just suspend a kid, but, uh, you know, providing a solution, which is uh, operates through a tier two um, program and I offer mentorship in the school district where I work with kids uh, who, you know, instead of suspending them, they, you know, go through my program, my mentorship program. Let me be the bridge between you and your teacher because, you know, hey, your teacher might not, you know, understand or speak the same language and might not understand, which, you know, so just being there. <laughs> I was like a trans, trans, translator. <laughs> like, much, or not, like you know, yeah, yeah, you know, and, uh, but, but yeah, it's something real that, and again, like, looking at the stats and just providing a solution for our kids in our community. You know what I mean? And, uh, but yeah, so also that, and, uh, also, uh, working, I also coach too, by the way, but, um, one of the things I offer is, is like for sports teams, uh, youth pro is, is we implement character. Um, my care, big, uh, pro big Oost mentoring program offers that character piece to program well, sports programs who want it. And, it's also obviously in made streaming use sports league, but we offer that to, to like high school teams. Like right now, um, Cordova high school is one of them that we're, we're operating with. And then also the junior program, but, uh, right now, not to switch, switch, sh uh, shift gears and but real quick. And I'm gonna double right back. But right now, division one, division one colleges aren't recruiting talent anymore because it's so much, it's an overflow of talent. Mm -hmm. They're now recruiting specifically, uh, GPAs and then specifically uh, the recruiting character, wow, you know, right now, you know, and, uh, you know, oh, a kid might average 40 points, right, in basketball over here in uh, Sacramento, but, oh, wait, he did this and did that, oh, they got, they're looking at his Instagram, he's smoking weed, or he doing this, he, 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 he listen, you know what I'm saying, whatever the case may be, okay, well, swipe next kid, because there's this kid over here in Missouri who's get averaging 40 points too, but look, oh, he's a leader in his community. Oh, he's doing this. He working with little key ref and little kid games and stuff like that. So that's, that's one of the things that right now that we're, we're doing with Big Oost Mentoring Program. I've got, I got high schoolers that's helping referee our flag games, you know, with the youth. 
And, uh, you know, it's just, it's the whole, you know, system that helps, helps uh, kids of all ages, you know, awesome, uh, succeed. Man. Who's yeah. funny? Who's funding your foundation? Is it like just donation or is it like the, the, is the city helping or the government, you know? Yeah. So um, our first year, you know, it's pretty much grassroots, you know, uh, in our first year in 2000 and uh, last year, <laughs> 2023, 20, 20, uh, we started MFYSL and, uh, you know, we it was strictly just us with donations and, you know, Black, Pan Black Panther style, Poly, Poly Panther style, you know, mm -hmm. uh, strictly just doing like that with the community. And, um, uh, and, and it was important, too, by the way. I just want to put it out there, you know, make this clear, but it was important to see that we could do it ourselves with no establishment, with no government help, no, none of that. So, but I was charging $15 for flag football last season. And then also, you know, the people who's from my community in which I grew up, everybody was offering a hand, and especially who was who the sports league was named after, you know, they knew, you know, those are two very popular guys that we grew up with. So everybody just wanted to help because they knew the that's what we community. lacked. Yep. With the power of community, you know, and, uh, so. you know, and, and, and God really opened up a lot of doors for us. Like we, we started out at church, you know, with the carpeted gym. And, uh, so we took out the basketball hoops and turned it into a football field and was playing indoor winners, black football. And then from there, fast forward to where we're at today, uh, I partnered with Jason Harper and, uh, and, uh, the Ranch Cordova Athletic Association, the RCAA this year, and man, they've been able to provide us with a field. They've they've been able to provide us with a, uh, you know, with a lot of resources. Um, Jason Harper, though, shout out to Jason, man. He's he's a uh, he's like family. So real quick, I'm gonna tell a quick story with Jason, man. We I uh, applied for a grant for the um, a grant out here in the city of Ranch Cordova, and um, he was one of the guys who uh, they referred me to talk to at City Hall. And mm -hmm. so I was like, I noticed that the Cordova high school was partnered with the flag league already. And, you know, I was, I, at first I was being a little territorial. I was like, man, where the food's from? They ain't from, you know, they ain't from out here. You know, my, my flag league is from out here. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I go to meet this guy, man, Jason Harper. I walk into, I, I walk into city hall. I go to his office and uh, I meet him and he's like, he, he's just, he's probably in his fifties, you know, white dude has a scratchy, tough, you know, yeah. sports coaching, sports coaching voice. He was like, hey, man, nice to meet you, Jason Harper, shaking my hand. He was like, you Polly? I was like, yeah, I'm Samoan. He was like, oh, okay, come to my office. And then we're talking as we're walking. He's like, hey, you know, TK52? And I was like, yeah, that's my uncle. He was like, oh, man, man you don't even, that's my brother. That's my brother. You don't even know. Like, that's my brother. And, you know, uh, he was like, shoot, he was like, I was there when your auntie was uh, on her possible deathbed praying over her. I was a youth pastor at Capital uh, Christian. I was youth pastor at Capital Christian uh, back in the day. And I put two and two together. I was like, oh, yeah. My, I was like, and my mom, like, man, my aunt, my aunt was a, a security, even security over there at uh, Capital Christian at the church out, out here in the East. And, uh, you know, so I made a connection. Like, oh, they, so that's when they probably built their brotherhood back then, you know, in 03. And so I was like, okay, he's like, yeah, man, you don't even know. Your uncle walked in right now, he probably start crying. He was seeing us talking right now, he probably start crying. And so he's, so I'm, so he's like, so what, tell me, tell me about what you got going on. And I tell him, like, well, yeah, yeah, I started a sports league named after my friends, yada, yada, yada. And he was like, what? Well, these guys just canceled on me 30 minutes ago. And here you go walking in my office. Shoot, we, so yeah, yeah, you're you're our guy. <laughs> it was like so boom, like thirty minutes before I walk in, our meeting was at two p.m. At one thirty p.m., this other flag league cancels on him, and so that's just the way God worked and worked it out. You know, what I'm saying this this other flag league is like from San Jose, like they weren't even from SAC, and like you know, but you know now and he's he's like yeah, so now I'm the the flag feeder league for the high school in Cordova high school wow. and also the junior program now. So now we're that third piece to their football program. And, you, you know, again, you know, glory to God, you know, and uh, Jason and the RCAA will partner with them and uh, they help us, you know, uh, with the facilities. And uh, he's been a huge blessing. Um, the president of the RCAA is the mayor of Rancho Cordova. So we're also, you know, 
we're uh, we're, we're receiving help from the city now as well. You know, so it's oh, it's man. been a journey. It's been a blessing. Uh, we're, we all yeah, we're also partnering with the Parks and Rec uh, for our summer hoop program. Um, so it, it's been a blessing, man. I was crying this morning, man, because I, I saw the email, you know, from the Park and Rec uh, this morning. You know, um, gosh, God is so good, man. I, I couldn't help but just like, man, God is so good because back in like, I think it was 17, I tried to do a three on three tournament with my church out there. Shout out to Victory Irish Rancho and Pastor G. And then, you know, we try to do a, a three on three tournament at White Rock Park. And, uh, you know, back then I wasn't privy to, you know, you supposed to put, get the permit insurance and all that. Didn't know how to do it, you know, but I, I felt some type of way and Pastor had to, back then was like, it's okay, we'll just do it in our church parking lot. But now, fast forward today, that's why I was crying. I was like, man, if people only knew, like, the journey, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like, it, was, it wasn't easy, you know what I'm saying? Like, like uh, to, to where things at today, and just the hard work that we put in, you know, and, uh, you know, where God put us now, it's like, we got so much favor with the mayor, you know, with the, you know, directors of you know, programs, athletic programs of our city and Rance Cordova and, you know, uh, met the legend uh, Max Miller yesterday. You know, he, he led the Cordova High School to 20 straight years of being number one in the nation yesterday. And it's just where every guy's lining everything up. This has been a blessing. And I I cried yet. Uh, this, or, yeah, this was it this morning, or, you know, because it's like, man, or, or yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday. Because, right? Like just the pain, like you know, I got a bar that said, you know, the the pain was the preparation that we felt, the hand we was dealt, you know, and it, it, uh, it, it's real, you know what I'm saying. And when I say the pain was the preparation, is because that it was though, you know, you don't forget that. And then when you when you when you receive the blessings and stuff, you appreciate it because you know you remember that pain, you know. And so you just thank God even more, man, and just be thank so thankful for the journey, you know. The long suffering, but it, it's it's been a blessing, those for real. But yeah, that's to answer your question, though, man. We're, we're receiving uh, help from the city now, and uh, you know, so with the back end of the mayor, shout out to Mayor David Sander <laughs> and some of the uh, council members. You know, uh, I was at City Hall, and uh, you know, let it be known with what we needed, and you know, they've been really receptive and supportive of our program. Enjoying the content, if you like it, man, please spread the news. You want that positive vibe? Leave a comment. Let us know how you feel about the topics. Share your story. Let's make the world better. Join YUS. And together, let's push this positive vibe. You have a YUS. I want to shout out, um, you know, I want to shout out a couple people. You know, uh, shout out my bro, man, because he he's also putting the work in. And it seems like we're both, um, God is you know, putting us up at the same time. But my brother, I grew up with him, you know, like I was telling Jason Harper, he said TK52, Tonga kid, he went, he was a wrestler back in the day. That's he goes by TK for short. But his son, Jacob52, who's also was in East Union, man, my rap group growing up. But uh, he he's uh, just got recently signed to WWE. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to see him in the ring, you know, and uh, keep keep the bloodline going, you know. And so shout out to my to my bro, man, Jake, man. I'm proud of you, bro. Keep doing what you're doing, man. I, and, uh, man, the world ain't ready, bro, because WWE needed him more than me. Nah, I'm just kidding. But, nah, he raw. He that nice. He that nice, though, for real. But shout out to my bro, man. Shout out to uh, Keith. Shout out to uh, Seek, you know what I'm saying, and Seth. Seth was already in there. He go by Solo Sequoia. But shout out to Seth too, man, and uh, all Moses I grew up with, and and uh, yeah, the whole community out here, man. We we just getting started, man. That's it. Yeah. Man, shout out to all the Usos, man. You got any questions for the Wilds, bro? Oh yeah, man. How long you been doing this, man? So uh, for the Wilds, like going solo since January. But uh, I've been doing it for a year now and a few months. Last uh, March or April with the We Fobs. Shout out to the We Fobs, man. They do, those guys are more focused on like broadcasting and uh, NFTs and stuff like that. And it's just, it's really just oh, okay. my brother and stuff like that that wanted to do this and stuff. So, yeah, man, it's been a, a year and stuff, bro. 
Started with your brothers too, yeah. yeah that's, that's how it normally starts. Yeah, that's how that, yeah, starts with the, with your brothers, man. For real. I always wanted to do a podcast. Well, I became I I like listening to podcasts for the past three four years, and then you know after you keep listening to the same thing, kind of like you as an MC, you like like yeah, I can rap too. That's how I feel as a yeah. podcast. I was like, man, I got some stuff to say. I know us some more yeah. things that we want to say, you know. So. Boom, yeah, why oops? <laughs> That's how that came up, yeah. Man. Yeah, good question. Bro. And we and you're right, man. We our people got a lot to say, man. And that's you know, hey, look at Tasi Wilson on your Spotify, man. And uh, I'm speaking for our people, man. You know, yeah, man. And with that said, man, I'm gonna leave it right here with a, a little word of uh, what do they call this affirmation? Today will never come again. Be a blessing, be a friend, encourage someone, take time to take care, let your words heal and not wound. Take it how you want to take it, y'all. Oh, man. You know That's probably, man. amen. Right. Yeah. Hey, but, but I'm your boy, Tony Moore, and my man, Tessie. Hey. We out. Bye, bye, bye.